I congratulate you, I congratulate myself on the 60th anniversary of the National Universities Commission. The oldest, yes, the oldest quality assurance agency where? In, in Africa? No, in the whole of the world. And I join you in celebrating with my boss, his academic eminence, Professor Abubakar Damur Rashid, on this diamond jubilee. For, for effect, I brought a diamond. I brought a diamond. You can see it's glittery. Diamond. I brought a diamond. Ah, yeah. If you believe that this diamond, you can believe anything. But what we must believe is that we now have the core curriculum, minimum academic standards, unveiled by the vice president of the Federal Republic, one of our own, one of our own, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, on his behalf by the secretary to government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa on the 5th of December, 2022. So what are we here to do? The core curriculum minimum academic standards, which is shaking the net. You know, World Cup has just, uh, is just ended. Shaking the net all over, all over Africa, all over the world. We have unveiled it. The 30%, you know, the CC mass is 70%. The 30% is still hanging out there. So what we want to do before we unveil the 30% is to have a guide as to how that can be achieved. Yeah, so here we go with the guide which I'm bringing to you under the auspices of Stratcom. That's the AUC Strategy Advisory Committee on the development and approval process of the 30%. But sorry about the slip in the introduction. It's not 70 percent 30 percent institutional addition of courses to the cc mass um, peter okibukola today is a beautiful friday december 23rd 2022 now we are in a rashid revolution that rashid revolution is in top gear that revolution is driven largely by this blueprint on the rapid revitalization of university education in nigeria 2019-2023 and the component of it that this is mass has targeted is strategic goal number two that by 2018 i moved it to 2022 the curriculum in nigeria university should be rated among the best three in africa of course now it's about the best in africa now walk with me along the road to this 30 percent in 2018 the my our boss baba rashid Academic Eminence Professor Bubaka Damo Rashid asked that Strafcom should fill out the people, fill out the Nigerian University system, the Nigerian University community about how, how the centrally determined course units can be incorporated into the, into the BMAS, the existing BMAS. So we conducted a survey of uh, the entire system where 76 universities participate, ownership spread across uh, the geopolitical zones and all that and you have this report which are circulated earlier and what did we find what was the consensus among the full professor survey they agreed that we should have 70 30 ratio but it should be faced over a 15 year period i'll begin with 30 percent give them small things job first in 2019 and then when you evaluate that oh yeah they're able to chew it and digest it and do very well in it move on by 2024 like every five years to 20 percent and then by 2033 to 30 percent after another positive feedback in 2019 Barbara rashid reform minded you know we're talking about rashid revolution met with the vice chancellors and it was a decision that let's begin this 30 percent in 2022 and uh, you can see applause acclaim everywhere Congratulations, CES, Professor Rashid. Uh, the man is looking very serious here. He's looking serious because he's, he's, he's hard. I have a tennis school. I don't see him hard. He's happy with all of us. This is a landmark achievement for Nigeria. Baba Rashid forever. No university system in Africa can match this CC mass. This is a giant leap for the Nigeria university system. Yes, yes, and yes. Did you know that all the university systems in the whole of Africa, so other countries of the world, are now looking for this CC mass. The download rate on the site is dizzying, it's unimaginable. By the first one week, we had uh, 5,000 downloads. By the next week, it just happened only on the 5th of December. By today, we had over 40, 
thousand downloads for each of the programs. This is uh, remarkable. Now let's look, look at the brief history of the system as over a 60 year period. You know, here you see Dave for Bele, pardon my using some pidgin English as I plod along with you. By 1962, that's why it's 60 years, the baby be born. And then by 1974, you can see it has a tooth. It, 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 it was empowered by, by law to start laying minimum standards. That's all the funny. Going on, going on, going on, man, getting bigger. And now Baba Rashid, you know, is writing that. So the commission is blessed with uh, executive secretaries. Uh, uh, Minu started it. Uh, they had Gobadia, had over to Aliyu, Aliyu had to Abukadur. Abukadur started the minimum academic standards, MAS. Hey, then Baba Jibri came. Baba Jibri said, oh, yes, but let us slim it down to benchmark statements. And then one person, hey, okay, we'll call that man. I don't know this man. Do you know him? Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll call him. And he said, no, no, no. Let's merge the mass and the benchmark to be BMAS. So that subsisted up till now. Now BMAS is getting faded. It's like, yeah, you, are, you say you are using Windows 7. Now Windows 11, CC mass is the game in town. And Baba Rashid, being reform mandate, has taken on CC mass. Hey, there's a question coming. Let's listen to the question. My name is Professor Yakub Magaja Azare from Bayer University, Kano, and currently the Director of Center for Research in Nigeria Languages, Translation and Folklore, as well as the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Salalamida University, Kano Hausa. Uh, I would like to know the general plan for the development of the 30% addition to the CC mass by each of the Nigerian universities. Thank you very much, Professor Yakub Azare. Uh, he is one of the leading lights for us in education. We are doing very, very, very much in the education discipline. So what is asking is what uh, the general plan. There are two possible approaches, by the way. There's the Jankara method. Jankara is a market in Lagos. And uh, Jankara, anything goes there. And Jankara method is, OK, we have 30%. Uh, we, all, uh, we all have developed the CC mass together. And we leave the individual university, just develop a 30%, and then you just move on like that. Uh, the other approach is the due process the global best practice approach, where we move on in such in a very systematic manner. The advantage or advantages of the due process approach include when we go through that due process through collective training. We go to build capacity of our universities in development of the curricula. And when we do that, when you are now moving, progressing from 30% that Baba Rashid has given to us to 100%, the lapse time will be reduced because capacities will have been built in the universities. Baba Rashid is pushing heavily for university autonomy. All of us were asking for university of autonomy. Uh, so this due process approach will foster speed attainment of that uh, phenomenon. Hey, this baby is asking every time, breast milk, breast milk. You need cook soup. You have to grow up first before you begin to eat soup. So let's look at how we cannot move 100%. Now, I'm going to go very quickly through this, but only to show you the moral of this story is that the Nigeria university system is still very young. We, we, we are quick to quote, oh, in the US, it is not done. In the UK, it's not done. You just leave every university to do that. If we did that, we'll just be, you say we leave frog. We'll just jump like a frog. We're not leaping. So look at these universities. I want you to be looking at the areas or the years highlighted in yellow. Look at uh, Nanjing. I was there some eight years ago. Al Hazar, uh, Baba Rashid supported us to go there uh, sometime. Look at Bologna. By the way, it's Bolo pronounced Bologna, not Bologna. Uh, Oxford, a group just came back from Oxford. 1096, 1088. Look at the others. Just look at this slide. Uh, Continue all the, all the names of these universities. And the years they were established. Look at them by region. So they don't do old, old, very old people. But look at us, just 1948. So we have to develop the, the, the culture of developing a curriculum and get a, a half capacity so to do. Our oldest university, 1914, just like yesterday, toddler. Our first generation universities, second generation universities, third generation universities, our state universities, the oldest, 1979, like yesterday. It cannot be like Bologna, like Oxford, 
in terms of the development of the curriculum of state universities and it goes on like that about private universities and uh, so that's it so the general plan is that we would take the thing step by step baby step so the university senate will draft the 30 percent we'll come to that details later and they will send the 30 percent to nuc nuc will get reviewers among ourselves will not be say you the NUC staff will just be the reps will just be like secretaries of the group so we'll have reviews of the drafts from the universities and then the feedback of the review team from NUC will be looked at by senate and senate will revise after that when this uh, is happy uh, we have the final approval the entire thing is by the university all all, all the all the review teams uh, uh, will be doing is ensuring that you comply with some 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 guidelines uh, some format and it's approved by AUC and at the end of the day you can see this in red you have the 30 percent university addition to the 70 percent of CC mass and then you have 100 percent Professor Yakub Azare that is the general plan so let me give you a few details of the plan the first step is for the university vice chancellor will say, okay, fine, uh, Senate, come now, come, come, come. We're going to establish a Senate committee on 30% addition. It's not it's not 30% CC mass, it's 30% addition to CC mass. CC mass is turning elegantly on its own, 70%. So you have 30% addition in Senate committee. You have the same committee at the faculty level, department level, and then at the program level. So the second step is when the committees are now formed, you now have a workshop to induct members of the program working groups, PWGs, on the methodology of 30%. Indigenous courses for the university. What about step three? Step three, the thing will now start going up. Going up how? The program will prepare the 30% additional courses, and then will present the courses to the department for review and approval, Department will review and approve. We we'll go to faculty, and the faculty has reviewed and approved. It will now go to Senate. Senate will review and approve. And then, oh, more details? Okay, fine. So let's see the more details. Hmm. You know, I said we're going to have Senate Committee on 30% addition. How will the com committee be composed? And what will be its terms of reference? We have some proposals here. Like I said, this one a guide. Though. So if uh, there, there could be customization, customization uh, and tweaking at the level of the of, of the institution, the university. So now this can be the Senate committee, Senate curriculum committee. But look, I think it's better for us to have a special adult committee on this business. So if that is the case, the chairman will be chairman of Senate Com curriculum committee or a nominee of the vice chancellor. And the, all these of faculties will be members. The secretary of the state curriculum committee or nominee of the registrar will serve as secretary. Is that all? Definitely not all. What are his terms of reference? Terms of reference are that Senate one will just set general guidelines for development of the 30%. And will monitor the implementation, will supervise corrections, will process finally to AUC. The other items here, you will get in a manual that will be provided by NUC. So let's go to the faculty level, almost the same thing. But the membership will be chairman, faculty curriculum committee, if there is one. If not, the dean be chair or ask somebody else to chair. All the heads of department will be there. The faculty officer or nominee will be there. In terms of reference, almost like that. That will transmit the state approved general guidelines of the faculty. A monitor implementation at the departmental level, compile for state approval and all of that process finally yeah so let's go on to the departmental committee almost the same thing uh, the chairman departmental curriculum committee if that doesn't exist it can be the head of department all the heads of units the unit now what do we mean i mean those programs let's take uh, a science and technology education uh, department in the in Lagos state university where i belong in that department we have biology education program or unit. We have the chemistry education program or unit, computer science education program or unit where I fit in, where I belong. 
and, and the rest. Mass uh, Education Technology Unit. So those are the, all of them will be there, nominee of, nominee of the head of the department. What should the departmental committee be doing? What are its functions or terms of reference? Customize like we had for the faculty and the department. Now, this is the heart of the matter, the people working. That's why we call it working group, not program uh, committee. Program working group, because this is the nucleus, you know, nucleus in the cell. Ah, is the center, center action, center piece of it. So the head of unit, say, in my case now, the head of unit of computer science education will be the chair. And then all academic staff teaching on the program will be members and the nominee, nominee of the head of unit. So what should the working group be doing? I'm going to slow down here and take it one by one. The working group will have to develop courses that will add 30% to the CC mass of the program to reflect uniqueness of the mission and contextual peculiarities of the university is to ensure that the additional courses do not exceed 30%. You know, we have provisioned 70% CC mass and we are topping up or adding 30%. We have to ensure that it does not exceed 30%. And I develop using the same format as the CC mass in the program. And also to ensure that 30% courses are not within the general studies course framework. So you don't have general studies running over the place. General studies already set. But Barashid is very clear. We want to build graduates per program, not graduate for general studies. So the general studies uh, framework has been trimmed in the CC mass and it remains trimmed like that. So we are not looking at, oh, not me, no, not me, no, but I should do. And all of us, this is my consensus, that we're not looking at a situation whereby you are now loading general studies again. So and not to duplicate courses of the 70% of CC mass. So that would be unique. You, 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 you see, uh, uh, every university has uniqueness of vision, of mission, strategic goals, and all that. So let, let develop on that. And then this uh, program working group will have to undertake revisions based on feedback from AUC reviewers and process finally to that. Let's take a short break. I will come back. Uh, we'll get on with the with task ahead. Hey, welcome back from the short break. Now we have another question coming up. the Director of Academic Planning, National Resources Commission. Can you guide us on the practical implication of the 30% for each program? That is how many courses should the university develop internally for each program it offers? Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Biodun Salu. As you've noticed, he addressed himself as the Director of Academic Planning of NUC. But we know from our usually reliable sources that Baba Rashid, you know, had proposed and has been approved that he is the Deputy Executive Secretary Academic. So congratulations to you, sir. He said he hasn't got his letter, that's why he's not able to formally announce it. So, my friend, don't worry, Archbishop, your letter did come. Uh, so congratulations again and again. So he asked for the practical implications of the 30%. You know, for a four-year degree program, the student is expected to earn or have passed 120 units. And then CC mass has provisioned for 70%. So 70% of 120, 84 units. And then the universities are expected to provide 30% of that total of this 120, that is 36 units. So if on the average you have two units per course, the expectation is that for every program that your university is running, you've got to have 18 courses for the indigenously developed uh, uh, courses for that program. Very straightforward. 18 courses. That's a lot. I'd like to thank uh, AUC and the leadership for making this to happen. Yeah, I can see another question. That's question number three. So what is happening here? I am Francisca Oladipo, a professor of computer science and the vice chancellor of Thomas Adoumi University, Oko Kwara State, Nigeria. So can you give us a practical example of the work 
of a program working group. Uh, you are a vice chancellor uh, that we deeply, deeply admire your competence. Uh, she took part in all the training programs, module one, two, three, four, five, six, and earned distinction all over. We're very proud of you, ma'am. Now, regarding your question, I'm going to give a practical example from Lagos State University, the Department of Science and Computer and Technology Education, and the program is Computer Science Education Program. So we're talking about the working group, this program working group. Now, we know that we are to add 18, 18, 18 uh, courses, 18 courses. That's a lot, as I said earlier, of two units each. So how do we proceed? We've got to look at the uniqueness and con context of, uh, the, uh, of, the, of our university and our program. Our university, Lagos State University, is uh, a center of excellence in all things. But in this case, in producing computer science education graduates, you know, for a metropolitan area and a mega city, which will be sixth largest in the world a few years down the road by 2050. So this will have huge, huge ICT-related challenges and enablers. So the teachers that we must produce from our program in Lagos State University should be those who can tackle cyber security and use of AI tools for fostering development in education, including e-learning models, to tackle issues, ICT related issues, ICT issues related to housing, public transportation, food security, health related challenges, and ICT mitigation of climate change impact on coastal cities. So when we have established this, we then send it to, that is the framework, we then send it to the department, send it to the faculty, say to say, when say has blessed it, that this is what you should do, they will then get together and begin to propose courses. Now I propose some courses here. My colleagues in the department, sorry, in the program, may throw this out, if, uh, may throw, it out throw this out if uh, it doesn't uh, meet with their expectation. But what I fear is, uh, I'll talk about the course codes in a minute, but where well, I can even talk about it now. You will have to differentiate the course codes from the CC mass. You know, CC mass will just have like EST or GST or whatever. So we got to let the color of the university show. So it's LASU, that's the university. EST, that's the course code for the department. So it brings it out, it, uh, it shows it distinct from the CC mass. So you have LASU EST 201, challenges and opportunities for ICT teachers in the Lagos Mega City. This is expected to be a lecture only 30, 30, 30 hours. Then LASU EST 202, school attachment program for ICT teachers in Lagos State. This program is to take, we had it before when the university started school attachment programs up with you, these, our teachers, ICT teacher trainees, will go to schools, assigned to schools. They will go there to see what the ICT infrastructure uh, is like, uh, studying delivery system and projecting for Lagos being a mega city. So at 300 level, we know that artificial intelligence, machine learning, these are very important skills for teachers to have and to impart on students. So we go, uh, the proposal here is to have pedagogical techniques, pedagogical techniques in artificial intelligence and machine learning. This of course will have a lot of practicals, 45 hours of practicals, 15 hours of, of uh, lectures, then learning theories for ICT teachers. Uh, some of our colleagues in psychology, in sociology, in uh, philosophy, I, I say that, oh, there are two scant uh, uh, topics or courses in this. What has been done, US LS is listen, gentlemen, is that for education, we have consolidated many of those courses so that we don't fragment them again and do not allow our teachers of, of subjects to have very few and be shallow in content knowledge. So what we have done here is, yes, we we'll recognize the importance of all of that. They are in the consolidated courses in the CC mass for all to take. By the level of the universities, we have learning theories for ICT teachers, sociological theories for ICT teachers, philosophy and ethics for ICT teachers. Surely the other programs in the, in the faculty of education will have uh, this, but it will be customized for the different uh, groups of teachers. 
So uh, teaching coding skills for students in a mega city, this is extremely important. And that's why I made it compulsory. Did you see, it? <laughs> are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'm seeing that we have only two compulsory courses in this 30% additional. The rest are electives. The reason being that hmm, the CC mass has quite a lot of compulsory courses. And if 84 units, and the students must pass 120 units. So even though these are rendered as electives, they are almost like compulsory because you have to add this to the 84 to make the 120 units. So uh, where, is, where the electives want to give them some degree of freedom in, in selection. Technological, uh, pedagogical techniques in cybersecurity. And we have, done, we have this in two, uh, at two levels, at 300 level, an elective, and at 400 level. So you can see all the 400 level courses are electives, not to hold them down, uh, but they have to add this to be able to make up the 120 units. So you can see teaching software development for schools for school management in Lagos State. ICT education for mitigating climate change in Lagos State. So where will produce these teachers? Oh, they are well fitted, well suited for Lagos State and for any mega city in the world. So our products will just be the very best around. Uh, let's see an example from the University of Port Harcourt by Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs. That's our grandpa in uh, Strathcote. So I'm going to read what he asked you. Very instructive regarding 30% of the CC mass. Of course, what immediately runs into one's mind is the vast environmental degradation. What about medicine? 30% for medicine. Sea and river contamination by crude oil, destruction of marine life, ambient or air pollution from soot, carbon particles, unabated gas flaring, widespread ecological damage, and much more from illegal and illegal exploration and exploitation of petroleum products. These events have impoverished the people of the area, changed their lifestyles, made them vulnerable, and imposed new disease patterns on them, which will engage the attention of senates of universities in the area, like that of Potaco, meaning that all the universities around the river area, river area running medicine can collaborate and do their 30% around this in the formulation of the additional 30% of the curriculum. Furthermore, there's the problem of Flooding, from which from time to time, as it did this year, assumes catastrophic dimensions. It was partly to find solution to this perennial problem that the forerunner of the River State University, as now known, was founded in 1972 as the College of Science and Technology. So what do all of these things mean? They mean that you decide, oh, what are the things that are peculiar within your context? And if you have similarities, okay, let's take Lagos State University of Education. We have Lasso, we have Lagos State University of Education, and we have some other universities all, all over the University of Lagos can collaborate. And so, okay, we have the same kind of context. So let, let's see what our 30% can be developed uh, uh, together consensually, and then we will we, we'll go to all enjoy. Oh, there's another question coming. Let's take uh, this next question. So, Mrs. Rosemary Obasi, the Director of Academic Planning, Bensi Dausa University. Please, Prof, I would like to know the uh, format for the 30% for each course for that is required by the CCMAS for each university to incorporate in that uh, document. I don't know if there is a format for that, sir. Thank you. There's surely a format for it, ma'am. Uh, Professor Rosemary Abbas is one of the best, one well, of the best directors of academic planning in Nigeria. In Africa, she's uh, very knowledgeable, very skilled, and she uh, has done so well in Benson Dausa University in Benin. And uh, I have a relation who went there for accreditation, and uh, she was quite quite heavy in her ex in her exhortation of what Benson Dausa University is doing, especially through the hand of Professor Rosemary Basi. Yes, we have uh, an answer to your question. The format for the 30% as uh, Professor Rosemary Abazi asked, uh, quite, quite straightforward and shorter than the one for the CC mass. Because we have talked all the big, big grammar in the CC mass. This is just addition. So you're going to have it like this, BSc Accounting, 30% uh, addition to CC mass. 
you have overview, you have objectives, you have cost structure, you have learning outcomes and course contents for each of the courses that you have crafted or listed or you have approved. And then you have the minimum academic standards addition to CCMAS based on the additional courses that you have. If, there, if you don't have any more anything different from these minimum academic standards, you keep it uh, as you have it in the CCMAS. Yeah, so let's look at a practical example. So you have BSc accounting, 30% additional to CCMAS. You have an overview, maybe two paragraphs, and then objectives of the 30% addition from Benson Idahosa University. And then you have the major objectives of 30% addition uh, for Benson Idahosa University to produce, provide, equip, develop. You can see these objectives are well stated, global best practice. So uh, we will implore our colleagues not to say to understand or, or to know or to teach. These are completely, completely, sorry to use the word, unacceptable. You have to use the correct action verbs for the objectives. All right. So you didn't have the cost structure. I've just imported, hmm, important exporter. I've just imported the, the ones I did for, for the last two computer science education. Don't, they, they do not fit in here, but uh, just to show you where you, you lay it out. So you have the 200 level, you have the 300 level. You can see the, uh, it, it will not be uh, Bessie, BIU, ACC, something here. So you have them here, the 200 level. And the learning outcomes and course contents for each course will now follow. So let's see what we have here before. Okay, this is what we have. So you have learning outcomes at the end of the stretch. We're able to analyze, to list, not to understand, though, not to teach, though, not to know. Look at the words. Okay, list the action. Words. You put the course content for each of those courses that are developed right up there. And if there are some minimum standards that are different from what we have in the CC Mass for accounting, then you put them there. Yeah, so mommy, Professor Rosemary Obasi, I hope I've answered that question about format. Okay, now let's move on to this matter of course code. I've mentioned it before. I'll just show you by way of example. Now you're going to have the university department prefix. So if it's a Madubelo University Architecture, it will be ABU Act 201. The reason is that when you now pack all of them together, you know we're going to now have the 100% for that program for every university. So you have the 70% CC mass, and that will have just uh, two character. Uh, two letter uh, 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 course code. But for this one, to show the uniqueness, then we have to put it ABU at 201 or Thomas Adeumi University Computer Science 101 or Glorious Visual University Economics 307 or Unizik Geology or Geography 406. So that is the uh, that is how we're going to put the course codes. Hey, hey. some Aluta issues are here. Hey, some people say my topic is not included in the CC mass. Mm -mm -mm. I was not consulted for the CC mass. Three important topics are missing in the CC mass. You should rework everything in my discipline. My program is conspicuously missing. And all of these are other issues. No problem with this because that is what is expected all over the world. People preparing people. But you know, this thing is limited. And you cannot put everything in the curriculum. In, in fact, in some universities, you will find the thing as loaded, even as we have in the CCM. But well, good news, good news for everybody. And the good news is that we have plenty of room, thanks to Professor Abubakar Damo Rashid, his academic eminence, for giving us 30%. Because we have plenty of room. We have plenty of headroom, leg room, every room. We need the 30% issue addition to innovate to come together to say, okay, we have this thing missing. Uh, let's have a group of universities and we innovate and, and if we have the same peculiarities, the same commonalities, we then put them there. 30% is a lot. Uh, you, as I've answered, uh, Professor Nui Salu, 18 units, 18 units. That is a lot. So what are we looking at as a post-launch activities? You know, the CC mass was launched, uh, unveiled like on December 5th. And then from January, that's from next month, we're going to have phase takeoff. Uh, uh, January to March, that's we're going to have development of the 30% addition to CC mass by universities. And by March, about uh, AUC will have approved, uh, approved 
the 30 percent so it means hey action starts now in fact uh we'll be meeting with the vice chancellors there is academic planning next week wednesday that will be the 28th of december 2022 at 2 p.m uh to, to to i mean to share awareness on, on these matters so that will be 30 percent and then between april and june workshops will be run to train staff in the implementation effective implementation of the CMAS. and then by january to august core textual materials will be developed and uh as i've we noted here the above is subject to final approval by ACMA management under the april leadership of course as a secretary. So other days we are directed by the other secretary. But why are we bringing this up? We are bringing this up because some people, as soon as they call this system, as, oh, this is wonderful. Let us start implementing. As you can see from this video, I said it will be short video, but this one is very long. Ago, that uh, we have some road to travel. We have to go. We have to build. Build at thirty percent. We have to build capacity in uh, delivery of the CCMAS, develop some core textual materials. Of course, this is never ending. This one here goes on and on. Uh, the last line, the last line, last line is more power to your elbow. Hey, uh, the, the, there is uh, the Nigerian version of this, more grease to elbow. Hey, I think we in the Nigerian University system may wish to ad adopt the global practice best practice if you like or good practice that's not more 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 grease to your elbow it's more power that's a better expression more power to your elbow hey that brings us to the end of this guide and uh oh i need some i need some grease my elbow i need some grease in my elbow no 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 i don't need no grease i need power to my elbow and on this note i'd like to wish you a very joyous 2023 May God continue to bless us in the Nigerian University system. I'm Okibukola, Peter Okibukola. It is bye-bye for me.